Hello everyone, it's Jonas again, and today I will be talking about dynamic maps, uh, both about the destruction of uh, objects and paths in maps, as well as um, sort of all aspects of the dynamic parts of Battlefield 4. Um, because when I went through it the first time, I talked a bit about the destruction and said what I liked and didn't like, but I didn't really offer any good motivation for why I thought that way. Um, and it's kind of been bothering me because I don't like uh, just offering opinions because there are already enough people that do that. Um, so I kind of went back in and started looking at um, sort of the whys, um, why I like one thing uh, and not the other. Um, because um, my point or my theory in this video is going to be about um, complexity and how it changes with destruction of objects as well as the sort of scripted um, scripted events in the different battlefield maps. And what I mean when I'm talking about complexity um, is basically this from my old video on path analysis. Uh, so there are a few things, but what I mean with complexity uh, it's basically things like um, height changes, uh, resources in some cases. There are quite few maps in Battlefield that have pick, uh, resources you can pick up, uh, but that would be one thing. Uh, cover, ease of use, uh, this one is questionable. Uh, but layout, for instance, um, if you compare a hallway that is straight compared to one that has uh, sort of a more complicated shape, something like this. Um, the bottom one is more complex. And then if you have, let's say there's a room here, and you, you're able to destroy uh, both of these walls, whoops, um, you basically get back to the uh, standard hallway, except you now have um, sort of a, um, a place to hide. Um, so that would be reducing complexity back to something like this again. Um, so that that's basically what I mean with complexity uh, in this video. Um, so when you're doing something um, to a map when you're running the game, um, you can either do it more complex uh, keep it uh, of the same complexity but change it and then make it less complex. And my theory in this case is if you want to make it more complex it's okay for games like StarCraft for instance uh, because in that game uh, most of the gameplay is about flanking the enemy, uh, attacking at different points and things like that. So the game handles this mostly with things like drops and enemies that can jump up and down cliffs and things like that, um, or just flying units. But there is no reason, reason why you couldn't just have the maps change instead, uh, like more paths expanding over time, uh, because obviously you can't change much in the early game, um, because you have to be able to defend versus uh, early aggro. Um, but let's say you reach uh, 20 minutes into a game of StarCraft, Having one path into your main is no longer a necessity. So eventually you could open up um, open up the map and make more paths available as the game goes on. And in the, um, the Zerg expansion, uh, I can't really recall what it's called, um, but it has rocks, like you can break them to create cover and then you can break them to sort of create more available paths. Um, things like that. It could be built into the map, but it isn't. Um, mainly for the competitive level, I suppose. Um, but there are also shooter games that could uh, be more complex as the game progresses. For instance, uh, horror games, something like uh, Left 4 Dead, for instance, could become more complex as the game goes on. Um, because um, in a horror game like Left 4 Dead you're basically trying to stay together as much as possible and by forcing players to take different routes or 
have more available paths for the enemies to take you would basically have to worry more um, creating sort of more tension uh, the problem with that game is that you uh, you sort of progress through the level and you never get back to the same areas so it's not quite as important but still something to think about um, they can also keep the same complexity but um, change the paths uh, for instance if you have uh, you have a bridge that rotates so you can move it from here over to here instead uh, basically keeping the same number of paths and available thingies um, but still changing the layout uh, so obviously if you want to go here it would take longer if the bridge was over here instead or in Starcraft for instance if you had um, let's say you have a rock wall with or you have a dam this is a dam so there's just some water so at the start you can move down here but there's a lot of water up here then you break the dam uh, all the water flows out um, and instead you can move up here for instance so the same number of paths just different ways to get to the same position and then there is less complex paths and uh, sort of areas which is what I'll be focusing on today uh, because the theory is that um, reducing the complexity means that players um, sort of get a more intense action game. Um, so let's go to the next one. No, that's not it. Here it is. Um, I'll just move the layers around for a bit here, like so. So, what are the results of lowering complexity? Number one, faster movement means more action. And by faster movement, um, I don't mean that you run faster, it's just easier to get from A to B. Like the uh, example I drew at first. So instead of... Um, whoops. Instead of... Uh, what the hell? Sorry for swearing, but whatever. So instead of running like this, you would just run straight across because the walls were not there anymore. Um, there are also longer sight lines, which means you spot players faster. Um, obviously this is dependent on the game, like if you have a railgun that does the same amount of damage regardless of distance, uh, longer sight lines are going to mean that you're going to shoot faster as well. Uh, but in Battlefield, uh, sure, there are snipers, but take something like Operation Locker for instance, that map is um, small enough that snipers aren't really going to be the main part of your problem and the other weapons don't really have the range to be able to uh, shoot that far. Um, there's also less cover, which means wider angles. Um, so instead of having... Uh, let's say you have a real wall to hide behind and you're sitting here. Um, you will have to be flanked, uh, so the enemy has to be way over here for them to shoot at you, because you're hiding behind the wall. But if the wall has a big hole in it, the enemies might be able to shoot you from over here. Um, so, this is basically the wider angle. Um, there's also bigger areas. Um, this basically means that um, if you destroy walls, uh, instead of having two separate areas separated by a wall, instead you have sort of a bigger area um, with just a small amount of cover. So instead of having you know this big wall you just have a, a wall and then you have some cover then you have some cover in the middle and then some cover on the sides. So area A will be sort of included in area B at the bottom here because you can easily run uh, circles around here in the middle. Uh, and since you will be able to fight in these compound areas, um, you will sort of run into more uh, more active players that are fighting other players, and you will also get more audio cues of people shooting, uh, which sort of drive up the pace because you will always hear shooting and fighting and whatever you do in your game. Uh, so the question is, uh, this probably means more action. 
Uh, I don't have any solid evidence of this, but that's sort of the core of this talk. So when we get to battlefield, um, I will actually start with an example of uh, destruction adding complexity, because in this case these sort of uh, shade thingies, I don't really know what to call them, um, but this guy is from the start they basically hang over the window here, and then when you destroy the wall maybe, I don't really know what triggers this, these guys sort of fall down creating a separate route where you can go up here and sort of run along the edge where you couldn't uh, without parachuting before. So that's actually one of the uh, few examples where destruction adds complexity because you sort of gain access to a new uh, a new part. Uh, there is also the the other map, I can't recall it, but it basically makes holes in the ground where you can go down uh, when you blow up some uh, pipes or whatever, which also adds more complexity. Uh, but in general most of the destruction tends to be lowering uh, complexity, like this one here. Instead of having a wall and a small doorway or whatever, um, or instead of having these sort of waist-high walls, you can sort of jump in. Um, and this is also a sort of weird case, because on this map, uh, once you destroy the um, the ends here, like, uh, yeah, this part here on the right is basically identical to this part on the left at the start, and then when you raise it, um, you basically create uh, two separate things, because at the bottom here, um, when you raise the uh, the building here, you create an area at the bottom that has lower complexity, but at the same time you're able to get up on top here, um, sort of adding complexity, only that uh, since the massive building here is blocking your sight lines, um, you're mostly able to uh, sort of snipe your half of the map, um, as well as you can also get in on the top level. Uh, I think it's up here somewhere. So that one is sort of neutral in its change to the map. Um, so it's more of a cool effect, I suppose. Um, yeah. Uh, this is also another example that sort of breaks the norm, because once you raise a house enough, it will uh, instead turn into this sort of rubble, um, which means that um, the map sort of goes from, um, let's say we have your, uh, you have sort of very basic box shaped house, box shaped house. Uh, so you start like this, then you destroy the walls, so there's a big hole here. Uh, meaning that you can see through, you can shoot through, you can run through. Um, so you're basically reducing complexity in all those ways. And then once it takes a certain amount of damage, instead of this it becomes uh, sort of a hill instead. Um, so sure you can run through um, or run over it in some case, um, but you can't shoot through it and you can't see through it. Um, so it sort of goes from um, high complexity at the start, and then it sort of goes down when you destroy it, and then it sort of goes up a bit at the end. Um, there's also, uh, or it has to be selective destruction, because if you could just destroy everything, you could just sort of shoot through and make a path just from your spawn to enemy spawn and just run along it and shoot, and that would be boring. So you need to have these sort of designated areas uh, that you can't destroy, because otherwise the game just breaks. Um, you can obviously design a game around it, but it's not really feasible for most games, because that would just make um, most stuff the same. Um, in this case, for example, you have your choke point here, um, and at the start you basically just have the hole in the middle here uh, to run, run through, and this is probably the biggest or the most impactful choke point 
in all of the battlefield maps, uh, at least in the original ones on Operation Locker, um, because there's basically just three ways to get to the uh, central point, and this is the biggest one. Um, so after a while, you will sort of blow these uh, places open, creating sort of a wider path. The problem in this case is that the choke point is so deep um, that even though you have these extra paths um, that sort of block grenades. For instance, if a grenade blows up here, you will survive in the right side here. Um, but having these sort of uh, choke points open up as you um, as you get killed in them will allow the map to sort of flow better um, because as uh, as fighting takes place in a certain area that place gets more destroyed and it sort of opens up more to create a different experience um, so if you wanted to instead of having these um, gates being blown up or uh, just damage triggers uh, you could sort of have them open up at certain points in the um, in the ticket count, for instance, in Battlefield, like when you reach 50% um, or 75%, these guys open up. Um, you could also have it just be standard damage where um, only one team could uh, blow them up. For instance, if you were on the team um, standing here trying to get in, you could not uh, physically blow these open because you'd have to wait for the sort of defending team to throw grenades at you. Because if you create um, sort of these paths that anyone can open, they're kind of pointless to be closed at the start, because otherwise what will happen is just someone will spawn with C4 or whatever, throw it on the walls, blow it up, and bam, you have new, uh, new ways to access the game. So that way they would just uh, just allow them to be open at the start. Um, so chokes are really difficult in that you have to sort of um, very early decide what uh, what's supposed to be destructible and what isn't. Um, so if you compare this to just the something like this, for instance, the house at the bottom here is has very little impact on how the map flows while something like the choke here is obviously um, really important because that's the way most people are going to take. So um, making something like this house here or even all of these houses destructible is quite an easy decision to make um, but sort of balancing around these different choke points is much much harder. Um, you could even have something else, like instead of having these choke points open here, you just say that this wall is open, allowing snipers to shoot from uh, good cover back here, instead of having to shoot from bad cover in front of the wall here. Just small things like that. Um, I really dislike this part of Operation Locker, which is why I put so much time into talking about it, but um, making a solution is not easy and I think they've tested enough uh, different layouts to um, sort of arrive at this design. Um, so now I will talk about um, a dynamic change that I think is uh, really good and it's the Tower of Shanghai, uh, which is obviously this big structure here. Uh, boom. Um, and at the start, you can only capture this point uh, from ground level, uh, sort of inside the house, as well as the top here, which is where most of the fighting happens at the start. And this building is important for two reasons. One, because it's obviously a capture point and it gives you points. And two, because you can parachute from this point onto each of the other points. You have B here, A is uh, way down here. Uh, so, as you can see, there's this guy, a blue dude, who jumped from the spire and he's going to be. Um, so, at the start, this is super important, and most of the helicopters um, are basically just fighting to get uh, this point. And 
once you destroy the pillars the tower falls and instead of having this sort of air focused um, game where you have to lift people up to attack the point and take elevator elevators and stuff like that um, you simplify it to become sort of a ground level combat instead and it's also blocked off and like up here so there are no vehicles that can get onto this point obviously helicopters can fly overhead and the boats can uh, drive along the edges but to capture the point you mostly have to do uh, sort of infantry fighting um, and the bad point when it comes to uh, dynamic changes is this map I think it's called flood zone or flood something and it's like I really don't like this map um, because the water when it shows up uh, adds complexity in that um, sure you can see um, yeah you can't see perfectly well but you can spot swimmers and then you can shoot at them um, but just because it takes so long to get to uh, to get to the different points means that um, the map will sort of get slower as game progresses instead of getting higher paced and having a better um, more focused end so I think it's kind of weird that they haven't really decided on a um, design decision for this or they just uh, decided to have two um, two different influences on the map um, so in Shanghai it becomes less um, less uh, complex as the game goes on and while in Shanghai no not Shanghai flood zone um, it becomes more complex as the game goes by uh, basically turning down the pace as the game goes on instead of turning it up which is what I would expect from a, an action game um, so if we go back to these uh, points I made before um, that one um, like changing the map to allow for faster movement longer sidelines less cover um, you could also say that you want to uh, instead of saying bigger areas at the bottom here you would say um, more narrow areas I suppose um, so areas is a bad bad term but let's say your map is sort of uh, something like this to begin with you basically cut off uh, trim off the edges to make it more narrow uh, reduce the number of available paths uh, because uh, let's say instead of having you have a weird looking path going like this and like this as the game progresses you will sort of blow up these um, thingies creating more of a um, wide open center so instead of having all this um, uh, all this distance sideways uh, you create a more open center where people fight more um, I'm not sure it's just an idea but at least I have something more um, tangible I suppose to say why and why I didn't like uh, why I liked and didn't like certain points of battlefield because that was originally just the point of this um, well thinking about it while thinking about it um, I realized that I had to sort of make another one with higher level of complexity as well um, just to do, mostly talk about it but in an action game that has dynamic maps I would say go for the maps that uh, reduce complexity force people together to create sort of a more higher paced uh, high intensity final fight even if the games are really uneven and most games tend to be um, uneven at least in battlefield um, the number of games that finish off with uh, players like within 20% of each other is I don't know one in 
15 or 1 in 20. Um, but you still want to create that climactic last firefight, even if the game is going to most certainly be one by one team. Um, so that's just my thoughts on the dynamic maps, and thank you for watching.